everyone, in this video I am going to show you how to integrate Stripe payment into your website. So before diving into code, let me just give you a quick overview of what is Stripe. Stripe is a popular payment gateway that makes it easy to accept payments online allowing businesses to securely accept online payments. It supports various payment methods including credit cards, Apple Pay and Google Pay. So, if you are a developer looking to accept online payment, Stripe is an amazing solution. In this video, I will guide you through the process of integrating Stripe into your website or application. So, without wasting time, let's get started. The first thing we need to do is to set up a Stripe account. To begin, you will need to create a Stripe account. So, visit stripe.com and sign up for an account. Once you are signed in, you will have access to the Stripe dashboard where you can manage your transaction. When you move on to the Stripe dashboard, you should make sure that you are in test mode and not in live mode. Once you have made sure, now you will see the option API keys. Here, when you click on it, you will see two keys. One publishable key and a second secret key. Do not share your secret key into your code. We will save this key into .env file and use it from there and with the help of .gitignore file we will prevent the .env file from being pushed to our github repository. Once we have the keys, now let's start with the code. In VS Code, I have my Stripe API folder opened and now as you will see here, I have two folders. One that is for frontend to which I have named client and another for the server. In the frontend folder, I have an index.html file which is our main page. In this, we have the button. When we will click on this button, it will take us to the Stripe payment checkout page. But for now, it just console logs you click me which is coming from the script.js file. Another file you will see here is success.html and cancel.html. Success page will appear when the payment was successfully done. And if the user for some reason backed, it will show the cancel page. And in the client folder, I have an image folder in which I have an image for the course that I am providing and style.css file for styling the page. So this is all for the client folder. Now we will set up a server side. And as you will see here that I have .gitignore file, which is preventing the .env file from being published to the GitHub repository. Okay, so let's close this. Now let's set up a server. In the terminal, run the command cd server, which will take us to our server folder and after it, let's run the command npm init y. It will generate a package.json file that will hold our dependencies. After this, let's run the command npm i stripe.env express nodemon and course. Stripe will allow us to create the Stripe API and perform various actions such as creating charges and payments, managing subscriptions and more. .env is a popular npm package that allows us to load environment variable from a .env file into your Node.js application. It helps us keep sensitive information such as API keys and secret tokens separate from our code base. Express is a framework for Node.js. It simplifies the process of building web application by providing various features and middleware. Express will allow us to handle HTTP requests, define routes, manage middleware and more. Nodemon is a development utility that automatically restarts our Node.js application whenever changes are detected in our source code. The course is a middleware npm package that simplifies the configuration of course header in our express application. It allows us to define the origins, methods, headers and other course related settings. Now in our package.json file, let's add one script which says start and it will start our nodemon. Nodemon and then our server.js file which we will create in just a few moments and let's save this. After we are done with adding the script, let's close this package.json file. Don't forget to save it. 
Once these all the dependencies are downloaded, now let's create a file in our server folder and call it server.js. Let me just close this and let's start with the code. The first requirement will be to load and configure the .env file using the .env package we just downloaded. Next, we want to import the express module and create an instance of express application. Now, we want to create a new express application that represents a server and it will be done with the help of const app equal to express. Now we want to add a middleware to the express application. Express.json is a built-in middleware that parses incoming requests with the JSON payloads. We will also import the course middleware and add it to the express application using app.use. Course allows requests from the different origins to access our server resources. This is necessary when making requests from the client-side application hosted on a different domain, as in our case, the front-end will be hosted at the port 5500 and the server will be hosted at 3000. Now, we want our application to start the express server on port 3000 and we can do it with the help of app.listen 3000 which calls a function and it just console logs server is listening on port 3000. The next thing we will do is to create a variable called stripe which will require the stripe package we downloaded and initialize it with our stripe secret key. We retrieve the secret key from environment using process.env.stripe underscore secret underscore key which allow us to keep our sensitive information separate from the code base. We will declare our stripe key in the .env file. So let's now create a .env file into our server folder. Now here let's just copy this and save this file and in our .env file let's just paste this and give equal sign and let's bring our stripe api key from our stripe dashboard. Go back to the Stripe dashboard and just copy the secret key by revealing the test key. Remember not to share this key with anyone. Copy the key and paste it into your .env file. Here just paste your key which you copied from the Stripe dashboard and save the file. After we are done with our API key, next we will define the store item that we will be selling. In this example, we are using a map data structure to store our items. Each item has a unique identifier and contains information such as the price in cents and the name of the item. This allows us to easily manage and retrieve information about our store item. Now, the most important thing we want to do is to define our route, which in this case is forward slash create checkout session. Within the route, we use an asynchronous function to handle the request and response object. Inside this, we will use try and catch. Inside try, we will define a variable session that will invoke the stripe.checkout.session.create method to create a new checkout session and accepts an object as an argument. Here, we define the payment method type as card to indicate that we will be accepting card payments. We set the mode to payment to indicate that this session is for one-time payment and you can even use a subscription here. Next, we define the line items by mapping through the items received in the request body. This will come from the script.js file. We will look at this in just a moment. For each item, we retrieve the corresponding store item and construct a line item object. The line item object includes information such as currency, which in our case it's set to USD. Then next we have the product data, that means the name of our store item. And then we have the unit amount, which is coming from the store item and it is set in cents. Then we have the quantity of the item. We retrieve this information from the store item map, which we defined earlier. Once we have all the line items, we set the success and cancel URL, which are the URLs the customer will be directed to 
after completing or cancelling the payment. But as you will see here, we have success and cancel URL set to process.env.client underscore URL slash success.html. This is coming from the .env file. This is checking for the success and cancel.html page in the client folder. So let's set the client URL in the .env file. So in our .env file, let's say client underscore URL equal to HTTP localhost 5500 slash client. What it does is it take the customer to the success.html file if the payment was succeeded and if it was cancelled, it will take them to the cancel page, which is in our client folder as we saw earlier. So let's save this file. After creating the checkout session, we will retrieve the URL of the session and send it back as a response using rest.json. This URL will redirect the customer to the Stripe checkout page where they can complete the payment. However, if there's an error during the process, we will catch the error, set the response status to 500 and send an error message using rest.status.json. This will allow us to handle and communicate any issues that may occur during the checkout session creation. Now this is all for the server side code. So let's just save this file. Now let's fetch the checkout session when the user clicks on the pay button so that they can be redirected to the Stripe checkout page, which we will do in our script.js file. Now let's understand the role of the client side code in our Stripe integration. Let's open the script.js file. You will see here that we have an event listener which listens on click. For now, it just console logs you click me. So let's change this. Within the event listener, we will make a fetch request to our server at HTTP localhost 3000 forward slash create checkout session. This URL corresponds to the route which we defined earlier in our express server to create the checkout session. We will set the method of the request to post and provide the headers content type as an application forward slash JSON. The body of the request contains an item we want to purchase. In this example, we have an item ID set to 1 and quantity to 1. Once the request is sent, we chain a series of then method to handle the response. First, we check if the response is OK using res.ok. If it is, we parse the response body as JSON using res.json. Finally, we assign the window.location to the obtained URL, which effectively redirects the customer to the Stripe checkout page to complete the payment. However, if the response is not OK, this allows us to handle any error that occurs during the checkout process. Now, as we are also done with script.js file, we will save this file and open the terminal and let's clear all of this with the command cls and you should make sure that you are in the server folder. After cls, run the command npm start to start the server. And now, as you will see here, it logs the message server is listening on port 3000. Let's now go to our client side that is hosted on port 5500 and as you will see here that we have one product and the pay button. Let's click on the pay button and see it will direct us to the Stripe checkout session. Here we will complete the payment process by filling the information that is needed like card information, name on the card, billing address and everything here. To test the payment, we will put the card number and expiry and other numbers in the card in 4242 series. It will allow us to test successful payment. Let's provide the email and say test124 at gmail.com. Card information in series of 42s. Month also in the series of 42. CVC 424. Name on the card, let's say it's going to be test. Billing address, let's set to Germany. Address line 1, fill with ABC because we are just testing the payment. Address line 2, let's say XYZ. Postal code, also in series of 42. City, it's going to be Berlin. 
and now when we click on pay you will see that here we will have animation okay and our payment was successful and it redirected us to the success page okay however if customers cancels the purchase for some reason it will take them to the cancel page so let's check that too so we clicked on pay and our stripe checkout page was launched so let's just go back and you will see the cancel message here so let's see if our payment was successful let's go to our stripe dashboard and click on payments and as you will see here that our payment of dollar 10 was successful okay so this is all for today's video i hope you understood the concept of how to integrate stripe payment into your website if you enjoyed this video please don't forget to like and subscribe if you have any queries do not hesitate and ask me in the comment section below thank you and i'll see you in the next video till then bye bye and take care